You know, when you buy used equipment, you should always test it thoroughly. And we've been doing that for this crossband repeater project. But when you do that, you may find something you are hoping not to find. And that's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, folks, I'd love to tell you that when you put together ham radio equipment, it goes according to plan every single time. But alas, no, it doesn't. In fact, we keep running into an occasional problem. Uh, KD6FTR Mike had taken this crossband repeater home, and he was just testing it out. Uh, he would uh, use his HT at home and try to hit the repeater during a net, and he noticed that the output on the UHF radio was very garbled, as if it was being overdriven. It was just set too hot. So we brought it back into the shop. Now, as you've seen in previous videos, I mean, we've been, you know, cobbling together all the parts. We had a, a viewer send us a couple of more radios, which was greatly appreciated. Uh, and uh, so we definitely have put everything to use. But what we're also finding out, and it's the nature of the beast, is that when you use used radios, you get what you get. And sometimes it's not what you had hoped for. Now, KD6FTR Mike had put the 25-foot cables together, including a spare, when we're out in the field. So we've got those built now. But we're also having to test out these uh, crossband repeaters a little bit more thoroughly now. And uh, we still have some work to do, but uh, making sure that both the 2-meter radio and the 70-centimeter radio are going to work well together and that they are working appropriately. We already found one UHF radio where the sensitivity was very, very poor. You had to have a very strong signal just to open it up. That's not going to work. So we start fiddling more with these radios. So a big part now is just testing uh, and just finding the, the radios that are just a little short of being 100%. And uh, at this point, that bottom radio is giving us the problem. We can actually hear the garbled audio coming out of it, both from using the mic on the front, but even crossbanding. And we didn't know if it was coming out of the 2 meter or the UHF radio originally, but we did get it nailed down to it is the UHF radio. And as we'll see a little bit later in the video, our troubleshooting, we started substituting other radios in and out just to see if we could identify, was it the 2 meter on top or the 70 centimeter radio on the bottom? And it was at this point, well, let's see if we can pull in another radio. Now let's let's pull in another 2-meter radio and make sure that the 2-meter isn't feeding that noise into the 70-centimeter radio. So what we're going to do is disconnect the 2-meter in the bracket and connect the spare that we have. We actually have one or two of these 121 2-meter VHF commercial radios. And so we're just going to uh, get it hooked in, and then we're going to test the audio and see if it's still just as bad as it's coming from two meters into the 70 centimeter. Will it still be garbled or will the problem go away? And if it goes away, it's the two meter radio feeding into the 70 centimeter. If it doesn't go away, then there's nothing wrong with the two meter radio already in the kit. Oh, no. Thank you. There's a 146550. Which one do you want? That's fine, Mike. All right, let's just make sure. All right, Landone. John, where'd that other radio go? Way right over there. It's off. Yeah, it's off. KD6FTR. Did this one get the uh, solder blob? Okay. It's not trusting. I have a bad connection to We've been exchanging radios back and forth between the kits just to find, you know, pairs that work well. And <laughs> we ran this test and it's not crossband repeating. Well, we've been so focused on the UHF radios that uh, the two meter VHF radio uh, needed to be double checked to see if it had solder. Now you can see the solder blob right there in the top middle. It, it's got some, but it didn't look good to us. So we're going to remove that solder blob and redo it because we have noticed a couple of cold solder joints or it just didn't really do a good job of actually creating conductivity between the pad. And so Don's going to work his magic on the solder here and we're just going to redo it. And as we'll see, it did in fact make a difference.
And as we can see here, Don is uh, applying that little wick there. What we're doing is we're taking up the solder. So what he's going to do is heat up the solder that was there. That will wick up into this copper braid, and that will basically clean off the pad. And he'll do this a couple of different uh, times with different parts of that braid with his solder iron. And you can see that pad now is mostly free of debris. And not to help out the cameraman here, he pulls over his magnifying glass, which I don't blame him. He's double checking that pad, make sure we've got most of the solder off, if not all of the solder off at this point. Then he's going to come back in and he's going to add a touch of solder to again make that pad, which has a little open in there, a little blob of solder will make that a short and that way it'll go into crossband repeat properly. Okay, you ready? Yep. 86FTR. Okay, AQ4 LMZ. So this one sounds fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds like the one I've been Yeah. So we know that works. The only thing we don't know is, what if we pulled this out and put it in there, is it gonna, or do we just say? Well, and this is where Frankenstein's monster <laughs> comes out. Because we were thinking, well, if this radio works with this one and this one works over here, why not just swap them out? And we could do that. Uh, remember, this is one of the kits that we want to use out in the field. I think it's uh, crossband repeater number two. And we already had everything working in the other kit. And we thought, well, let's just swap the labels. You know, we'll make sure we have our six ready to go. And we'll go back and fiddle with number seven. Now, keep in mind, number seven is our spare. We definitely want a spare for the day of the race in case one of these just just decides not to work. So Mike is getting in there and again attaching cables between the two different kits, you know, VHF on one, UHF on the other, just to make sure that it's going to work correctly and eventually he gets everything put together. So I'm not using the Marine Corps way. <laughs> okay, are we ready? Is it the Marine Corps way? Turn off the one you're not using? Yeah. No. Test one, two, three, four, five. There's a bit. Hey, four LNZ test. Right, the buzz Holy is, cow, man. The buzz is distortion in the bottom. 440 on this one is our problem. We've done it now twice. We're like, okay. Let's show this. You want to videotape it? Here. I just want to show yeah, that we're... Do this. Let's uh, get the audio. Go ahead. Very distorted, and the tone, that PL tone is super hot, so. it's in the radio. It's in the radio. Yep. All right. So our next, well, let's call it a, you know, a, another try, is to get back into the paperwork, the documentation on these radios. There are actually two programs um, that you, uh, you can use with these uh, ICOMs the FS100 and the FS100S. The S version is for the non-display version of the radios, and just the FS100 is with these displays that shows you the frequency and so forth. And again, one of the programs allows you to program the radio so that you have your frequencies on the various channels and so forth. The other program is called Adjustments, and this allows you to go in and adjust the radio if for some reason you feel like the radio is maybe uh, unbalanced or something's not correct on the receive sensitivity, that sort of thing. And you can see on Mike's laptop that it looks totally different than the programming software. And it took us a while to just kind of look at it and kind of get a feel for what we would have to do. It's a much more simplified interface, and you use your arrow keys to uh, increase or, or uh, reduce the number of hash marks that shows you, you know, the strength or the sensitivity or whatever it is that you're doing. Here he's running a sweep. Uh, but in any event, we uh, got into this. And we thought, well, maybe since that radio is so hot that we can turn down the receive side in the programming. We've never used this before. We don't know if it'll do that or not. We tried a couple of things and sad to say, no help. This, this program could be potentially helpful in other ways, but wasn't helpful for our needs and, or at least we couldn't find that it was. And so we essentially have another UHF radio that is too hot and won't be usable for the race. 
So I'll go ahead and show some of the footage from just continued testing using the adjustment software, but we did not get this to work. And in fact, we're essentially down a UHF radio. We don't even have enough UHF radios now for six kits, much less seven. Or I think we're down to six and we need to get still number seven up. So, you know, it's a little frustrating. We need a yet another UHF radio and we know where there are two. So I'll just leave it at that for now. We've used two in the past and we may have to cannibalize one or both of those for this project to get it up and running. So we'll leave it at that. We're going to get all seven of these up and running. The UHF radios have been the, shall we say, the weakness of these kits. I don't know if it's just the radios that we purchased. Uh, we, we just don't know. We don't know if maybe it's just a shortcoming on these radios from time to time. But that's been our experience. They're, they have been the radios that we've had to work on the most. So... Let me just mention something new. We're going to start uh, up a Patreon page. If you're interested in supporting our club, you might not want to be a club member because you're at some distance. You can always join, even if you want to be a long-distance member. It's $25 to join the club. But we also have been thinking about maybe setting up Patreon, and we went above 6,000 subscribers the other day, and we just want to make uh, let you guys know we do, in fact, have a Patreon URL that you can go in, and if you're already a, a Patreon user, you can look up El Cara Ham Radio and maybe give us a couple of bucks a month. We only use the proceeds for both the YouTube videos and now will be a, a Patreon for projects, and uh, all of our money goes back into the club. No, nobody's pocketing this money. So if you feel inclined to help us out with some Patreon uh, monthly money, that would be wonderful. We just wanted to announce it today. We'll probably announce it a couple of times in videos. We're not going to force you to listen to that all the time. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP Brian. We hope you enjoy the videos. Subscribe, like the video, and we'll see you down the road. Thanks for watching.